Now, just to be clear, we're not done with secondary authority, but when we find some codified law through secondary authority, we wanna pause and make sure we fully understand it. So uh, we're gonna go through the three steps of analyzing codified law, read the catch lines of the entire act, break any on point statutory sections into elements, and define any unclear elements with the definition section, okay? So we have this 17 USCS 107, that is the fair use defense. We're gonna take that into Lexis and then look for the uh, catch lines and read the entire act. So here we are back in Lexis and you know to do that, we're gonna read um, here, we're gonna use the uh, table of contents. Also I'm in you know reading mode, so usually you'll see the table of contents um, over here. All right, so I'm gonna click on view full table of contents and we're gonna look for other sections that might apply to our defense. So here we are in section 107, limitations on exclusive rights, um, fair use. So I'm gonna start at the beginning here of the act and, and go through and see if anything else applies to us, okay? So I'll pause and do that. And of course, if you wanna follow along, please, please do the same. So I read the scope of exclusive rights and sound recordings and Hey Jude is a sound recording, but I read it and it's just talking about copying sound recordings. So that doesn't apply to us either. So I'm gonna keep looking. Okay, as I continue to scroll down beyond chapter one, which is where we're at up here in 107, I found this chapter five is all about copyright infringement and remedies. So the plaintiff's attorney would have read um, all of this. And so we'll want to read all of this as well to make sure we understand everything. Like for instance, if we lose, might we have to pay for attorney fees? Well, what if we win? Could we make the plaintiff pay for attorney fees? So there's a lot here that is secondarily on point. So what I'm gonna do is in my, in my research uh, plan here, I am gonna put uh, under new research leads that we need to look at chapter five of the Copyright Act, uh, because there's a lot there that secondarily applies. It's not directly related to fair use, but uh, we'll definitely wanna research that. Okay, so I buzzed through everything and it looks like this is the main section on fair use. This is really what we need to, uh, to focus on. So then we're gonna do uh, kind of the next step in analyzing codified law, which is to break it up into elements. So we have copyrighted work, Yes, the, the song's clearly copyrighted. It is a work. There's no issue there, we agree. Um, are we doing it for criticism? It seems like we are. Are we doing it for comment? Seems like we are. Um, we're criticizing or maybe commenting, maybe cr not so much criticism, but maybe we're doing more comment. And because it's you know the disjunctive or here, it doesn't have to be all of these things, could be any one of them. Okay, and then let's see if anything is defined in the act for purpose or character, nature, the um, amount of and subst substantiality of the work. Like we copied all of the music, but not the words. So, you know, is that gonna really hurt us? And then the effect upon the, uh, the potential market. So we'll go back into the act here and we see at the beginning of our chapter, cause we're here in 107, fair use, and you see here the definition section. So we're gonna read that section and look for whether it defines any of those terms. All right, so let's let's look through here. So um, again, you can follow along if you wanna just put in 17 USC 101 into your search bar. Um, otherwise, I'm, I'm just gonna pause the video and search for anything that has been defined. Okay, so I got to the bottom and I did not find anything in the definition section that uh, pertain to any of our um, elements. Okay, so that kind of does it for analyzing the Copyright Act to make sure we're not missing anything to do with, with fair use. We understand the elements here. And so now really the next step is to go into the fourth step of the research process and see what case law has added to this, this um, statute. So has it added anything to criticism or comment, which is probably gonna be our focus? What has it said about purpose, character, nature, amount, substantiality, effect, and, and so forth? Now, instead of going, you know, here we are in research case law, instead of going straight to 
um, the search bar and look for case law, I'm going to return to secondary authority um, that treatise, the Nimmer on copyright treatise that we're looking at to see what it has already found for us. Okay, so that's what we'll do in the next video. See you then.